Hi, I'm Maggie Albert. And I'm Simone Johnson. Thanks for tuning in to another week of Carolina Kid News. The North Carolina primary elections will be held Tuesday, May 6th. And today we are featuring another Meet the Candidates special. Carolina Kid News is happy to provide your family with an up-close and personal profile of candidates on this year's ballot. Stay, Stay tuned! tuned. Hi, I'm Representative Carla Cunningham, and I currently represent District 106 here in Mecklenburg County. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about myself. I was born in Waysboro, North Carolina, and moved around quite a bit as a child. I went to college, got my Bachelor of Science degree after attending five community college and one university, which was Winston-Salem State University. I have two grand two children, and three grandchildren, had to think about that for a minute, three grandchildren, and they all reside here for right now, but will be soon relocating in Atlanta. I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I got in politics. I got in politics when health care legislation was a very hot topic for the president. As an advocate for health care, as well as developmental disabilities, mental health, and substance abuse, I felt very obligated to become engaged. When the new district lines was drawn in North Carolina, a new seat opened up, and I ran for that seat, currently 106 seat. I also had no opposition in the primary. I felt very compelled because of the health care legislation and the passion really burned inside of me. So I felt like I could take that passion to Raleigh to have the voices heard of the many people in North Carolina that lack health care. Additionally, politics right now is, being, is quite challenging. I am learning quite a bit and every day I learn something new. But my issues when I am in Raleigh are mainly focused on women's issues, health care, and education. And I know that for my community and my constituency, that is some of the priorities that need to be addressed. And I look forward to continue to serve you. Hi, my name is Curtis Osborne and I'm running for the 12th Congressional District seat. Uh, I want to tell you just a little bit about my background. I grew up in Monroe, North Carolina, a small town outside of Charlotte. I grew up in public housing. My mother raised me and my sister. Uh, after finishing high school, I went off to Virginia Military Institute because my mom taught me that in order for a community to truly work, everybody has to serve that community. Um, after spending a year at a military academy, I finished up my engineering degree at North Carolina State University. Uh, during the time that I was a student at North Carolina State University, I actually enlisted in the Army Reserves and served time four years active, four years inactive in the Reserves. Um, I worked for an engineer for a couple of years and then I went on back to school and attended law school at North Carolina Central University School of Law. After finishing up my law degree, I returned to my hometown of Monroe and I opened up a solo law practice. I practiced law for a little over two years and then I decided to go back to school and I uh, went to George Washington University Law School in Washington DC where I got an advanced law degree in litigation and alternative dispute resolution. After earning that degree I uh, opened a law firm in Washington DC and I practiced there mostly in the areas of employment discrimination and gender discrimination. Uh, I represented people who were discriminated against on the job. Uh, based on their race and gender and, and, and other areas. Uh, I, I practiced law there in D.C. for several years in the federal courts in D.C. and Maryland actually. And then I moved back to North Carolina. When I moved back to North Carolina, I situated myself in Charlotte. And I've been back in Charlotte now for uh, about 10 years. I've been practicing law a total of 15 years now, representing people mostly in North Carolina throughout the state, ensuring that their rights are not abridged, making sure that people have full rights here in the state of North Carolina. I've enjoyed doing it, I've enjoyed practicing law, and I hope to continue doing it. During the entire time that I've practiced law over the past 15 years, I've been a solo practitioner, which means I've been a lawyer working with no other lawyer, just myself. Now, I have several paralegals who work with me, so I am a business owner. and I've been a business owner for 15 years, which means I have to meet the responsibilities of running a business, including uh, making payroll. Everybody wants to be paid for working, so I've done that. Uh, another thing that I've done is uh, I've grown through life understanding that if you want to achieve something, you can achieve it if you set your mind to it. And I love speaking with children about achievement. Uh, I tell people, 
you know, I grew up poor, I grew up in public housing, but I understood that there was something beyond the world of where I grew up. And if I focused my attention, if I focused my ideals, if I worked hard enough and was willing to make certain sacrifices, I could do anything in life I wanted. And it turned out to be true. Uh, but, the, but the biggest thing uh, to add to that is make sure you have your faith in God. If you have your faith in God and you work hard, all things are possible. And I'm a, I'm a living example of that. Okay, let me uh, tell you a few things that I think might be unique or perhaps things people might not know about me. Um, I grew up playing sports. I was pretty athletic. I played football. I played baseball. Um, I ran track. I started running track in high school, and I was actually pretty good at it. We went to the state championships on a few different occasions during the time that I was in high school. Uh, I enlisted in the Army Reserves between my first and second years of college. Uh, I did boot camp out at Fort Bliss, Texas, uh, the summer of 1988, and I actually did advanced training at Fort Belvoir, Virginia during the summer of 1989. I enjoy the arts, especially jazz. I consider jazz a true art. Uh, I love jazz. Um, one thing people might not know about me is that I've actually run two marathons, and I ran those marathons pretty much back to back. I've ran them four weeks apart uh, one was to raise money for AIDS research, and the other was a Marine Corps marathon. Uh, and I trained for both of those marathons pretty much at the same time, simultaneously. Um, I was born in August, so I'm a Leo. Uh, I participated several years in Big Brothers, Big Sisters of the Greater Charlotte area. I really enjoyed that. I've also been active uh, with a group called TBACS, Teach Boys and Girls Success, a group that reaches out to uh, young kids and help them understand what it means to sort of run a business. Um, I'm a lawyer. I've been a lawyer for 15 years now, and I'm actually licensed to practice in five different jurisdictions, that being North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Washington, D.C., and the state of Maryland. Uh, I practice law in both state courts and federal courts. Um, I have an engineering degree that I received from North Carolina State University and uh, I've got my Juris Doctorate, my law degree from North Carolina Central University School of Law and I actually got my advanced law degree, graduated with highest honors from George Washington University Law School. Hello, I'm Natasha Marcus, candidate for North Carolina House District 98. The 98th district includes the towns of Davidson, Cornelius, portions of Huntersville, and a little bit of North Charlotte. It's the seat that has been held for many years by the Speaker of the House, Tom Tillis. He's not running again, so it's an open seat this year. I'll be on the ballot in November. A little bit about my background. I was born in upstate New York. I was raised in a modest home. My father was a Republican and New York State legislator. He's also an attorney and he taught me early on about the importance of paying attention to what's going on in the world around you, getting involved, being a leader when possible. My mom was a public school teacher for 33 years, one of the best in the district, still gets notes from her teachers, or from her former students, about what a great teacher she was. And I learned from her the importance of a dedicated educator and the difference it makes in the lives of kids. So I took those values with me to college and on to law school, which is what brought me to North Carolina for the first time. That was in 1991. I went to Duke Law School and never left this state. As I like to say, I wasn't born here, but I got here as soon as I could. I practiced law in Greensboro for several years, and together with my family, my husband, and my two daughters, moved to Davidson in 2007, which is where we live now. My oldest daughter, Madison, is 16 years old, and my younger, my younger daughter, Ellie, is 13. And I've always been proud of my daughters and happy to be raising them here in North Carolina, which has made education a priority historically. But lately, I have grown concerned about our public education system here in North Carolina. There have been many cuts to education recently, and we are losing teachers at an unprecedented rate. I believe it's important that we change our priorities. And so for the first time in my life, I'm running for office. And should I be your choice in November, I will focus on getting our priorities back to public education, number one goal. We need to pay our teachers a living wage and give them an incentive to stay here and teach our kids. It's important not just for the teachers, but for our students 
and for business here in North Carolina and the future of our state. My second priority will be growing a strong middle class with an economy that has jobs to offer. And last, I want to focus on regaining North Carolina's reputation. We used to be known as an education state from pre-K all the way through our university system. And unless we get that back, we will be in a situation where we're in decline, and I don't want that to happen. In, in Raleigh right now, we have one party with veto-proof majorities at both houses, and it's an imbalance that has led to some bad policy. I want to bring balance back to Raleigh. Hi, I'm Maggie Albert. And I'm Simone Johnson. Thanks for tuning in to another week of Carolina Kid News. The North Carolina primary elections will be held Tuesday, May 6th. And today we are featuring another Meet the Candidates special. Carolina Kid News is happy to provide your family with an up-close and personal profile of candidates on this year's ballot. Stay, Stay tuned! tuned. Hi, my name is Asif Majid. I'm a candidate for North Carolina State Senate District 40. Let me share a little about my background. I came to Charlotte as a businessman. I was a uh, franchisee. As a matter of fact, I, I was the first uh, franchise, Burger King franchisee in the state of North Carolina. But I opened up a, a store on I-85 at Batesford Road. Uh, I hired thousands of people at that uh, facility and I'm proud to say that uh, it was a good help to the community. I've also served on the Charlotte City Council for eight years. I served on the Charlotte McBurg Planning Commission. I served on the Charlotte Housing Authority. We had more housing starts during that time, affordable housing starts, when I served on the uh, Housing Authority than any other board at that, at the, of that time. Um, I also serve on the North Carolina, Governor Hunt's North Carolina Commission on Education for Economic Growth, dealing with the, the policy about uh, educating young people and tying in men with the industry that was coming to North Carolina to make North Carolina a progressive state, which it was in education. Now it seems like we are a regressive state. It is a regressive state. We are 46 in teachers pay. Uh, we need to do something about that. I want to go to Raleigh to uh, change that situation and work for the people of District 4 in North Carolina. I also I was the president of the West Charlotte Merchants Association. Uh, we built a, uh, I was the developer and the, of uh, the West Charlotte Business Incubator, which dealt with um, supporting businesses and getting them contracts with the city, the corporate sector, and uh, growing businesses and creating jobs for people on the corridor. I'm a graduate of North Carolina A&T State University. I am a decorated combat uh, Air Force pilot. I was a B-52 aircraft commander and captain, uh, and I have over 120 combat missions over North Vietnam. Afterwards, I uh, was a pilot with uh, U.S. Air, and that was Piedmont Airlines at the time. So I uh, have a, a lot of service. Uh, I also was a clinical chaplain with the North Carolina State Department of Corrections, uh, where I work with our youth. Um, and that's why, I, you know, I'm, I'm so compelled because when uh, the state uh, people legislature cuts a head start, they don't know that uh, they are making a big problem in the future for us uh, because it costs more on the long run if uh, we don't have educated people. And so uh, that's, that's a particular concern. We shouldn't be cutting a head start. Uh, we shouldn't be, uh, we should pay our teachers the uh, national average. Uh, education is a very important key because they build prisons based on how many uh, kids uh, can read on a third grade level. Uh, so we have some problems that need to be corrected on for also uh, raising the minimum wage and, and all that's very important, a living wage for, for people and, uh, and also um, helping the women who are trying to get started with their first jobs uh, to have a child care, affordable child, child care, because that makes up a very significant portion of the, of, the, of, the, of the budget, household budget. Thank you very much. Have a great day and God bless. Hi, I'm Ty. I'm uh, the regular Joe from Charlotte, uh, a graduate of Olympic High School. Go Trojans. I'm a proud graduate of North Carolina A&T State University. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, 
Uh, for the last 15 years, I've dedicated my life to service, um, even from college, uh, to help pay my way through school as a police officer, uh, as a educator. I taught eighth grade and middle school and um, worked in the healthcare field for the last eight years prior to that uh, from mental health to behavior health as well as working uh, as a um, community organizer uh, for female reproductive rights as a health center manager at Planned Parenthood. So just a little bit about me. A lot of people look at me and they say, hey Ty, you have a very varied uh, resume, which I think is wonderful because I believe that some of the issues that are facing our community right now, you have to have that person on the ground who actually understands what people are going through and a person who has that real life connection to the people. And I'm a people person. I can speak to anyone. I just believe that, you know, as a young person, it's time for us to step up to the plate. I am so proud um, of my accomplishments and my upbringing. Uh, coming from a Christian household, a single mother of five kids, I'm the oldest. Um, 8, 9, 10, 11 years, the first one in my family to graduate um, from college um, and prior after that and my two sisters graduated from A&T as well as Central and I have a brother who goes to Smith um, and is very, very active. So I think that's one of the major things that makes me very important. I'm also a um, 2003 initiative of the MUSI chapter of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Um, also, I'm a, um, a traveling man from um, St. John's Lodge Number no. 12 in Greensboro, North Carolina, Prince Hall affiliated. So when it comes to these organizations, I've been a part of so many different groups and also a part of the, the NAACP. I, I can remember as a young man when I was 15, uh, actually going to the Million Man March. Uh, I actually went down to, um, to Jaina down in 2006. Um, and been very active in the community. Right now, I actually host a book bag drive from here in Charlotte as well in uh, uh, Durham, North Carolina for uh, low-income communities which I grew up in. Uh, and it's, it's something that actually goes to my heart growing up in Roseland uh, in the Clanton Park area. And I understand the need and actually what's facing our community, especially when it comes to our teachers who have to pay for a lot of supplies and a lot of families who can't even afford them. So I believe that our, future are, that our children are the future and I am very excited to step forward. So uh, that's just a little bit about me. Um, something you don't know about Ty. Now Ty is a crazy guy. I'm a fun guy. I'm a, I like to have fun, but also, I also believe in fitness. Uh, I was a young man who was overweight at one time and I made the chance, to, to, actually I made the decision to step up and make a difference when it comes to myself and I'm a very I have person I love Zumba so I love Zumba and I also love uh, spin class cycling so I believe this is one thing to keep us very active uh, I have a lot of energy um, I'm a very um, uh, how can I say an avid person who really is uh, ready to step in step into the spotlight and um, and speak for the people so again my upbringing as well as my education as well as the organization and all of that makes time so uh, that's just a little bit about me um, this is the average Joe uh, from Charlotte and I'm very excited to speak with you today and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak with you on this level God bless you bye bye Hi, I'm Maggie Albert. And I'm Simone Johnson. Thanks for tuning in to another week of Carolina Kid News. The North Carolina primary elections will be held Tuesday, May 6th. And today we are featuring another Meet the Candidates special. Carolina Kid News is happy to provide your family with an up-close and personal profile of candidates on this year's ballot. Stay, Stay tuned! tuned.
Thanks for tuning in this week. We hope your family enjoyed our Meet the Candidate special. Carolina Kid News would like to thank all the candidates who participated in our Meet the Candidate special and encourage other candidates to share their profiles with our viewers. Remember, voting is a family affair. One of the requirements at Piedmont Middle School is to participate in a, an international community service project. And this school year, we decided to focus on a project that would impact uh, families in Malawi, Africa. And our big focus is education. So our project starts with an idea through Equitas, and Jonathan George uh, helped to organize our project. Yeah, Steve Pugwetas is a good friend of mine. He's a local nonprofit here in Charlotte that connects well in, in Malawi. Um, mostly folks on education and, and secondary scholarships uh, is, is definitely one main focus. And so uh, we really wanted to drive home the, the value of education um, for our students to understand for themselves the importance of it, but also to see the importance that is placed on education in Malawi. Uh, so we focused and we uh, showed a video about Kordofar, uh, orphan, a secondary student in Malawi and his, the value that he puts on education, uh, walking six miles to school. And so we wanted to mimic that and we wanted to have the students uh, understand that and, and walk to school one day. They happen to miss a few classes, so that was a little bit of the draw, but we wanted them to, to be a part of that and, and walk just like Kordofar would and, uh, and get to school. Uh, a little bit late for them, but that's okay. And uh, so that was the idea. So we, we really request that each student raise about $20 to walk, but some they just took it and ran with it, and 50 and 100 and 300 dollars to sponsor an entire student. So these students at Piedmont, they're phenomenal, they're great kids.